teach us to love more dearly. Help us to know and discern our gifts in our world that we can share with all the world. Show us your mercy. Give us a vision of hope. Guide us in the ways of justice and peace. Amen. In one of our lessons today, we heard about the gifts. And today I wanted to mention to you the, the because St. Patrick's is a total ministry parish, we are always discerning our gifts, what we have to offer, what we can offer to our community, to our world, within our own church, within our parish. I know with the pandemic, it's been very, very difficult for us to exercise our, our real big goals and what we really want to do in the church and with the church and in the community. But we have a board out in the fellowship hall that has names on it and, and what gifts you possess, what gifts you wish to share and be a part of. Um, it's gotten a little lost because of the pandemic and because we haven't spent a lot of time in the fellowship hall. But I invite all of you to browse that board and and look at the different gifts of the different people and what you can offer to that board as far as your gifts in our discernment. In 2019, a 12-year-old, Abraham Ogobeki, was diagnosed with a rare blood disease he underwent a successful bone marrow transplant and an intense schedule of chemotherapy. Abraham, now 14, is out of the hospital and his prognosis is promising. Over the course of his illness, Abraham learned he had been selected for the Make-A-Wish, a charitable organization that makes the dreams of seriously ill children come true. Abraham wanted a long lasting wish, and he had an idea that he shared with his, his mom, Miriam. I remember, says his mom, we were coming home from one of his doctor appointments, and he said, mom, I thought about it, and I really want to feed the homeless. Abraham's mom remembers, and then I said, are you sure, Abraham? You could do a lot. You could have anything you wanted. You sure you don't want a PlayStation? but she really wasn't surprised by her son's selflessness. Prior to his diagnosis, Abraham and his family regularly volunteered in their community, handing out hot meals to the homeless. Abraham's wish was granted. Beginning in September of 2021, on the third Saturday of each month for the next year, Abraham's Table provides meals for 80 homeless people in Poindexter Park in Jackson, Mississippi. The Make-A-Wish Mississippi chapter helps Abraham collect donations from local businesses and organizations. And when his wish is completed this August, Abraham wants to turn Abraham's Table into a nonprofit organization to continue what he began with his wish. When the homeless people get the plate, 
Some of them would come back and sing to us and thank us, Abraham says. It just really feels good. It warms our hearts. And my parents always taught us that it's a blessing to be a blessing. In his first sign in the Gospel of John, Jesus' changing simple water into choice wine is a fitting sign of what Jesus has been sent by God to do, to transform our world from the brokenness of sin and deadness, of self-centeredness into God's banquet table of generosity, hope, and healing. Abraham's table is an extension of God's table at which the watered-down wine of fear and self-centeredness is replaced with the new wine of compassion and gratitude for the life God has given us, of honor and respect for every human being as a child of God, of the justice, mercy, and peace of God, the host of the great wedding feast. There are times in all of our lives when we have felt like the wine had run out. We felt like we just weren't good enough. We felt just plain and ordinary and didn't know what to do or where to turn. Our lives may have felt empty and we felt like the joy was just gone. It seems like we have been to the party of life and started out with fine wine, and the next thing we know, we are drinking warm beer. We are running on empty and feel like there is nowhere to turn that would bring the joy we needed to fill our tank. If we put our faith in Jesus, he can fill us with the living water and then he can turn it into the fine wine of our gospel today and give us joy like we never felt before. He takes the ordinary and makes it extraordinary. He changes us from the inside out. Jesus will fill us with the living water of joy and peace so we may live our lives transformed as the fine wine. As tomorrow is the day we honor Martin Luther King Jr. and later today we will sing, lift every voice and sing. I thought it would be fitting to share some of Martin Luther King Jr.'s quotes that may show a reflection on today's gospel. Use me, God. Show me how to take who I am, who I want to be, and what I can be, can do, and use it for a purpose greater than myself. A quote from Martin Luther King. Now I say to you in conclusion, life is hard at times, as hard as crucible steel. It has its bleak and difficult moments, like the ever-flowing waters of the river. Life has its moments of drought and its moments of flood, like the ever-changing cycle of the seasons. Life has the soothing warmth of its summers and the piercing chill of its winters. And if one will hold on, he will discover that God walks with him and that God is able to lift you from the fatigue of despair to the buoyancy of hope and transform dark and desolate valleys into sunlit paths of inner peace. A quote from Martin Luther King Jr. If you can't fly, then run. 
If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, you have to keep moving forward. Not everybody can be famous, but everybody can be great because greatness is determined by service. You only need a heart full of grace and a soul generated by love. A quote from Martin Luther King Jr. Amen.